Okay, good morning class. Today we have Q&A speed building. So let me give you some proper names that come out. You have Mr. Garcia, it's 180 to 210. Hamlet, Crone. You have Wallace's. March. <laughs> I know. You have Composite, Exhibit 3. Florida, Florida Mold Inspection, Inc. Keith Starr, Mr. and Mrs. Wallace, Epic, you have Sworn Statement in Prof, sorry, Sworn Statement in Proof of Loss, okay? And so we're going to start at 180, and this is going to be five minutes, and it does start in the middle, okay? So in the middle of your transcript. One eighty. It's very difficult for her to take. All right. You have to wait until I fully finish speaking. All right. Did you speak with Mr. Garcia regarding the claim? Yes, I have. Did he take notes or photographs that he shared with you in discussing the claim? Yes, he has. Do you have those with you? The photos, Hamlet has it. Let me see. We have a new system called Chrome where photos are put on Chrome. So I can get those to you on disk. Just to let you know, you can't take them off, but they're on disk. But you're welcome to have that. That was one of the things. We sent you a letter on March 30, 2006, scheduling your examination. We had a list of documents that we had previously asked the insurer for. Some of them they had, some of them they referred to us. And anything on that list that you have, do you have any of those documents here with you today? Well, let me see. He keeps some claims and notes on this. Once again, everything gets transferred in what you call Chrome, just to let you know, and that can be downloaded on a disk for you. All right. How do you spell that system? Chrome? Yes. K-R-O-N-E. That's where his notes are. And do, do you have a copy of the March 30 letter? I can show you my copy. Did you get a chance to see these photos? I don't know. So you have seen them. I believe you've seen those, correct? Copies are never as clear as the real picture. In the March 30, 2006 letter, we asked for copies of any and all invoices, statements, bills, or receipts from any contractor who has provided any opinion with regard to repairs of the property, other than the documents previously provided by the Wallaces. Do you have anything to supplement? I think you would probably have the same thing the Wallaces gave you as I have. And I see a Florida mold inspection. That's a new one. I brought this along. If you need a copy, I can make a copy. Okay. Do you want to look to take a look? Yes, we can make a copy. I'd like to attach this as exhibit three. Well, we have to make it back at the office. Is this your only copy? Yes, it is. I'm going to mark this the original and then when you make a copy, you can send it to me. Just send me back the one that I put the sticker on. Right. So composite exhibit three would fall within the category and that's Florida Mold Inspection Inc. Why don't you go ahead and keep that one? He can get me another copy. All right. And any and all engineers and or expert reports which substantiate, show or otherwise establish the damage to the property other than the mold report, what other engineering reports or expert reports do you have? Let me first say that once a report is done, <clears throat> the mold report is then given to a company who's involved by being a mold specialist. Keith Starr is putting together the repairs from the mold, so you should get that shortly. The other... So there's an estimate in the works. Yes. A mold remediation, right. We'll give you these to look at and then tell me if you have these or not. Okay. Those are the some subcontractors that are involved and providing bids for Mr. and Ms. Wallace. These are the support for your estimate, is that correct? Yes, it is. Are there any other documents other than the ones I just <coughs> read into the record that would be responsive to those requests? No. Okay, and that would cover three, which is any and all documentation, which evidence any inspection of the property for any reason since the purchase of the property to date. Were there any other inspections done? Would you have documents to reflect those inspections? No. Your estimate that will go? My estimate. Okay. 
Four, any and all documentation which evidence notice of the claim to the insurance company and or agent. Do you have any such documents in your file that evidence notice? For what again? Notice to the insurance company. Notice from whom? From the Wallaces or someone from Epic on their behalf. No, just my estimate and my documentations of subcontractors. Okay, there are no notes or anything. No. To that nature, and that's a no. That's a no. The reason I have to ask you. Yeah, I said. Well, you have to wait. You have to wait. Okay. Until I finish speaking, or else I'll have to ask you again. So the record is clear. Understood? Yes. Thank you. Six. Any and all de documentation and/or other tangible evidence that establish the damage and the cause of the damage to the property. Anything else besides your estimate and those documents that we just went over? No. Seven, any and all reports, contracts, bills, estimates, other documentation, evidencing any repairs performed or re recommended at the property. Are there? No. Any documentation of repairs at the property? No. Eight, any and all documentation which evidence any and all repairs and or improvements on the subject house from the time of purchase to the present. Do you have any such? Okay. And so real quickly, um, and or is S-K-P-O-R, S-K-P-O-R. You have um, tangible is tang, B-L, T-A-N-G, come back, B-L. You have property is prot, P-R-O-T, property. You have um, remediation is just stroked out, so remediation, three strokes. You have um, substantiate is S S T A N T substantiate. Okay, this is going to be at one ninety. You all, it's a little tough. It's very difficult for her to take. All right, you have to wait until I finish fully speaking. All right. Did you speak with Mr. Garcia regarding the claim? Yes, I have. Did he take any notes or photographs that he shared with you in discussing the claim? Yes, he has. Do you have those with you? The photos, Hamlet has it. Let me see. We have a new system called Chrome where photos are put on Chrome. So I can get those to you on disk. Just to let you know, you can't take them off, but they're on disk. But you're welcome to have that. That was one of the mm -hmm. things we sent you a letter on March 30, 2006, scheduling your examination. We had a list of documents that we had previously asked to, or the insurer for. Some of them, they had some of them, they referred us to you. And anything on that list that you have, do you have any of those documents here with you today? Well, let me see. He keeps some claims and notes on this. Once again, everything gets transferred in what you call Chrome just to let you know. And that can be downloaded on a disk for you. How do you spell that system? Chrome? Yes. K-R-O-N-E. That's where his notes are. Do you have a copy of the March 30 letter? I can show you my copy. Did you get a chance to see these photos? I don't know. So you have seen them. I believe you've seen those, correct? Copies are never as clear as the real picture. <clears throat> In the March 30, 2006 letter, we asked for copies of any and all invoices, statements, bills, or receipts from any contractor who has provided any opinion with regard to repairs at the property. Other than the documents previously provided by the Wallaces, do you have anything to supplement? I think you would probably have the same thing the Wallaces gave you as I have. I see a Florida mold inspection. That's a new one. I brought this along. If you need a copy, I can make a copy. Okay. Do you want to take a look? Yes. Can we make a copy? I'd like to attach this as Exhibit 3. Well, we have to make it back at the office. Is this your only copy? Yes, it is. I'm going to mark this the original, and when you make a copy, can you send it to me? Just send me back the one that I put the sticker on. Right. So, Composite Exhibit 3 would fall within that category, and that's Florida Mold Inspection Inc. Why don't you go ahead and keep that one? He can get me another copy. Any and all <coughs> engineers and or expert reports which substantiate, show, or otherwise establish the damage to the property, <clears throat> other than the mold report, what other engineering reports or expert reports do you have? Let me first say that once a report is done, the mold report is then given to a company who is involved by being a mold specialist. Keith Starr is putting together the repairs from the mold, so you should get that shortly. The other... So there's an estimate in the works. Yes, a mold remediation, right. 
We'll give you these to look at and then tell me if you have these or not. Okay. Those are the subcontractors that are involved and providing bids for Mr. and Ms. Wallace. These are the support for your estimate, is that correct? Yes, it is. Are there any other documents other than the ones I just read into the record that would be responsive to those requests? No. Okay, and that would cover three, which is any and all documentation which evidence any inspection of the property for any reason since the purchase of the property to date. Were there any other inspections done? Would you have documents to reflect those inspections? No. Your estimate that will go? My estimate. Okay. Four, any and all documentation which evidence notice of the claim to the insurance company and or agent. Do you have any such documents in your file that evidence notice? For what again? Notice to the insurance company. Notice from who? From the Wallaces or someone from Epic on their behalf. No, just my estimate and my documentations of subcontractors. Okay, there are no notes or anything? No. To that nature, and that's a no. That's a no. The reason I have to ask you. Yeah, I said. Well, you have to wait. You have to wait. Okay. Until I finish speaking or else I'll have to ask you again. So the record is clear. Understood? Yes. Thank you. Six, any and all documentation and or other tangible evidence that establishes the damage and the cause of the damage to the property. Anything else besides your estimate and those documents that we just went over? No. Seven, any and all reports, contracts, bills, estimates, or other documentation evidencing any repairs performed or recommended at the property. Are there? No. Any documentation of repairs at the property? No. Eight, any and all documentation which evidence any and all repairs and or improvements on the subject house from the time of purchase to the present. Do you have any such documentation? in your file that's responsive to that request? No. Nine, any and all documentation evidencing additional living expenses incurred. Are there any documents to that nature in your file? No. And then again, we ask for dates in which the engineer and the AC expert could inspect the property as the Wallaces have requested that we send someone back out. That's right, she's just mm -hmm. Okay. And so some words I wanted to give you all. Um, remember, engineer is E-N-G, near. You can do it that way. Um, you've got um, insurance company is SNRK, S-N-U-R-K, insurance company, SNRK. You've got recommended is R-E-M-D, come back D, recommended, two strokes. You've got... Um, Anything else is N-I-G-L-S, anything else? And you've got agent, A-G-T, okay? A-G-T for agent. This is gonna be then you all, um, 200 for five minutes. It's very difficult for her to take. All right. You have to wait until I fully finish speaking. All right. Did you speak with Mr. Garcia regarding the claim? Yes, I have. Did he take notes or photographs that he shared with you in discussing the claim? Yes, he has. Do you have those with you? The photos, Hamlet has it. Let me see. We have a new system called Chrome where photos are put on Chrome. So I can get those to you on disk. Just to let you know, you can't take them off, but they're on disk. But you're welcome to have that. That was one of the things. We sent you a letter on March 30, 2006, scheduling your examination. We had a list of documents that we had previously asked the insurer for. Some of them they had, some of them they referred us to you. And anything on that list that you have, do you have any of those documents here with you today? Well, let me see. He keeps some claims and notes on this. Once again, everything gets transferred in what you call Chrome, just to let you know. And that can be downloaded on a disk for you. How do you spell that system? Chrome? Yes. K-R-O-N-E. That's where his notes are. Do you have a copy of the March 30 letter? I can show you my copy. Did you get a chance to see these photos? I don't know. So you have seen them. I believe you've seen those, correct? Copies are never as clear as the real picture. In the March 30, 2006 letter, we asked for copies of any and all invoices, statements, bills, or receipts from any contractor who has provided any opinion with regard to repairs of the property. Other than the documents previously provided by the Wallaces, do you have anything to supplement? I think you would probably have the same thing the Wallaces gave you as I have. I see a Florida mold inspection. That's a new one. I brought this along. If you need a copy, I can make a copy. Okay. Do you want to take a look? 
Yes. Can we make a copy? I'd like to attach this as Exhibit 3. Well, we have to make it back at the office. Is this your only copy? Yes, it is. I'm going to mark this the original, and then when you make a copy, can you send it to me? Just send me back the one that I put the sticker on. Right. So Composite Exhibit 3 would fall within that category, mm -hmm. and that's Florida Mold Inspection, Inc. Why don't you go ahead and keep that one? He can get me another copy. Any and all engineers and or expert reports which substantiate, show, or otherwise establish the damage to the property other than the mold report, what other engineering reports or expert reports do you have? Let me first say that once a report is done, the mold report is then given to a company who's involved by being a mold specialist. Keith Starr is putting together the repairs from the mold, so you should get that shortly. The other... So there's an estimate in the works. Yes, a mold remediation, right. We'll give you these to look at and then tell me if you have these or not. Okay. Those are the subcontractors that are involved in providing bids for Mr. and Ms. Wallace. These are the support for your estimate. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And are there any other documents that other than the ones I just read into the record that would be responsive to those requests? No. Okay. And that would cover three, which is any and all documentation, which evidence any inspection of the property for any reason since the purchase of the property to date. Were there any other inspections done? Would you have documents to reflect those inspections? No. Your estimate that will go? My estimate. Okay. Four, any and all documentation which evidence notice of the claim to the insurance company and or agent. Do you have any such documents in your file that evidence notice? For what again? Notice to the insurance company. Notice from who? From the Wallaces or someone from Epic on their behalf. No, just my estimate and my documentations of subcontractors. Okay, there are no notes or anything? No. To that nature. And that's a no. That's a no. The reason I have to ask you. Yeah, I said. Well, you have to wait. You have to wait. Okay. Until I finish speaking or else I'll have to ask you again so the record is clear. Understood? Yes. Thank you. Six. Any and all documentation and or other tangible evidence that established the damage and the cause of the damage to the property. Anything else besides your estimate and those documents that we just went over? No. Seven. Any and all reports, contracts, bills, estimates, or other documentation evidencing any repairs performed or recommended at the property. Are there? No. Any documentation of repairs at the property? No. Eight. Any and all documentation which evidence any and all repairs and or improvements on the subject house from the time of purchase to the present. Do you have any such documentation in your file that's responsive to that request? No. Nine, any and all documentation evidencing additional living expenses incurred. Are there any documents to that nature in your file? No. And then again, we asked for dates in which the engineer and the AC expert could inspect the property as the Wallaces have requested that we send someone back out. As soon as you can give us those dates, we would like some, okay? Yes. Let me just show you this document entitled Sworn Statement and Proof of Loss dated October 17, 2005 in the amount of two. Okay, and so um, some words that come out. You have um, oh, I wrote some words up here. You have Welcome is WK, initial W, final K. You have supplement, S-U-P-L-E-M-T. Inspection is N-P-G-S, N, final P-G-S. Subcontractors, S-U-B, sub, and then contractor is K-R-R-T. Come back, final S. And Florida is F-L-A twice. F-L twice with an asterisk, okay? This is gonna to be 210, you all. It's very difficult for her to take. Mm -hmm. All right. You have to wait until I fully finish speaking. All right. Did you speak with Mr. Garcia regarding the claim? Yes, I have. Did he take any notes or photographs that he shared with you in discussing the claim? Yes, he has. Do you have those with you? The photos, Hamlet has it. Let me see. We have a new system called Chrome where photos are put on Chrome. So I can get those to you on disk. Just to let you know, you can't take them off, but they're on disk, but you're welcome to have that. That was one of the things. We sent you a letter on March 30, 2006, scheduling your examination. We had a list of documents that we had previously asked the insurer for. Some of them they had, some of them they referred to us. And anything on that list that you have, do you have any of those documents here with you today? Well, let me see. He keeps some claims and notes on this. Once again, everything gets transferred in what you call Chrome, just to let you know. 
and that can be downloaded on a disk for you. How do you spell that system? Crone? Yes. K-R-O-N-E. That's where his notes are. Do you have a copy of the March 30 letter? I can show you my copy. Did you get a chance to see these photos? I don't know. So you have seen them. I believe you've seen those, correct? Copies are never as clear as the real picture. In the March 30, 2006 letter, we asked for copies of any and all invoices, statements, bills, or receipts from any contractor who has provided any opinion with regard to repairs at the property. Other than the documents previously provided by the Wallaces, do you have anything to supplement? I think you would probably have the same thing the Wallaces gave you as I have. ICA Florida mold inspection. That's a new one. I brought this along. If you need a copy, I can make a copy. Okay. Do you want to take a look? Yes, we can make a copy. I'd like to attach this as Exhibit 3. Well, we have to make it back at the office. Is this your only copy? Yes, it is. I'm going to mark this the original, and then when you make a copy, can you send it to me? Just send me the back the one that I put the sticker on. Right. So composite exhibit three would fall within that category, and that's Florida Mold Inspection E. Why don't you go ahead and keep that one? He can he, give you another one. Yes. Ed, any and all engineers and or expert reports which substantiate, show, or otherwise establish the damage to the property other than the mold report, what other engineering reports or expert reports do you have? Let me first say that once a report is done, the mold report is then given to a company who's involved by being a mold specialist. Keith Starr is putting together the repairs from the mold, so you should get that shortly. The other... So there's an estimate in the works. Yes, a mold remediation, right. We'll give you these to look at, and then tell me if you have these or not. Okay. Those are the subcontractors that are involved and in providing bids for Mr. and Ms. Wallace. These are the support for your estimate. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Are there any other documents other than the ones I just read into the record that would be responsive to those requests? No. Okay. And that would cover three, which is any and all documentation, which evidence any inspection of the property for any reason since the purchase of the property to date. Were there any other inspections done? Would you have documents to reflect those inspections? No. Your estimate that will go? My estimate. Okay, four, any and all documentation which evidence notice of the claim to the insurance company and or agent. Do you have any such documents in your file that evidence notice? For what again? Notice to the insurance company. Notice from who? From the Wallaces or someone from Epic on their behalf. No. Just my estimate and my documentations of subcontractors. Okay, there are no notes or anything? No. To, uh, to that nature, and that's a no. That's a no. The reason I have to ask you. Yeah, I said. Well, you have to wait. You have to wait. Okay. Until I finish speaking or else I'll have to ask you again so the record is clear. Understood? Yes. Thank you. Six, any and all documentation and or other tangible evidence that established the damage and the cause of the damage to the property. Anything else besides your estimate and those documents that we just went over? No. Seven, any and all reports, contracts, bills, estimates, or other documentation evidencing any repairs performed or recommended at the property. Are there? No. Any documentation of repairs at the property? No. Eight, any and all documentation which evidence any and all repairs and or improvements on the subject house from the time of purchase to the present. Do you have any such documentation in your file that's responsive to that request? No. Nine, any and all documentation evidencing additional living expenses incurred. Are there any documents to that nature in your file? No. And then again, we ask for dates in which the engineer and the ex AC expert could inspect the property as the Wallaces have requested that we send someone back out. As soon as you can give us those dates, we would like some, okay? Yes. Let me just show you this document entitled Sworn Statement and Proof of Loss dated October 17, 2005 in the amount of two. Okay, you all. And... Um, other than is O-E-R-N asterisk. Other than O-E-R-N asterisk, I think is I-N-G. And we'll get ready for your test, okay? So you have your test number one, um, 200 Q&A. You have Jean Quit, Red Lobster, King Soups. Supers, right? King Supers. Yes. Okay, so it's S O O P E R S. Okay, and this will be your test number one for five minutes, and it's 200 Q and A starts in the mid middle. Was her boyfriend there while you were talking to her? I think so. Yes. Okay. What did you do after that? We moved the cars. 
Where did you move them? We turned to the corner and parked them right there on the side of the road. On the shoulder? Yes. Were you wearing a seatbelt at the time of the accident? No. When your car was hit, did any part of your body come in contact with anything in the car? I flew forward. As far as I know, I hit the steering wheel. Where did you hit the steering wheel? What part of your body hit the wheel? I just went forward. I don't know what part of me hit. I just went forward. Did you notice any pain immediately when you hit the steering wheel? No, not immediately. All right. What did you do after you moved the cars? We went and called the police. Did you personally call the police or did someone else? My aunt did. Where did you go to call the police? At a restaurant and lounge. Did you go with her? Yes. And what did you do after that? We waited for the police to come. And did they come? Yes. How long did it take for the police to get there? It was a long time, probably 45 minutes to an hour. We had to call them twice. Did you call the second time because they just hadn't shown up? Yes, right. What did you do while you were waiting for the police? Just sat and waited and talked. You sat in your car? Uh-huh. Again, you have to say yes. Yes, sorry. During that time, did you talk to Jean Huit or her passenger? No. Did you have any conversations with her other than the first one you told me about where you said, didn't you know that or what you were doing? No. When the police arrived, did you talk to the police about what had happened? Yes. What did you tell the police officer? I told him exactly what had happened, that I was at a complete stop at the stoplight and my aunt and I were talking while waiting for the light to change and she came and hit me from the rear end and she also agreed that's exactly what happened. So while you were talking to the police officer, Jean was standing there too? Yes. And you heard what she said to the police officer? Yes. Did the police officer ask you if you were hurt? Yes. And what did you tell him? No. Did he ask Jean quit if she was hurt? Yes. Did you hear what she told him? Yes. What did she say? No. At any time while you were still at the house, did you experience any pain? I did. After we got in and sat in the car, I did. Where did you start feeling the pain? In my neck and my back. That was before the police got there? Yes. How long did that last? Not very long. Were you still in pain by the time the police officer got there? No. Where did you go after you left the scene of the accident? We went to the Red Lobster. How were you feeling physically while you were at the Red Lobster? Very upset and nervous. How about physically? I would say I had a headache, but I just assumed that it would go away. When did the headache start? I'm not sure. It was just the emotional part and everything. I'm really not too sure when it did start. But you think it was sometime while you were at the Red Lobster? Yes. I know it was then because we talked about it when we were having dinner. Did you talk to Jean Quit about how she was feeling? Yes. What did she say? She was shaken up quite a bit, nervous, and I told her we'd be all right. Did she complain about any specific pain? She said her back hurt also, so I told her she should go see a doctor. What did you do after you had dinner at the Red Lobster? I took my aunt home, and then I also went home. What did you do when you got home? Went to bed. How were you feeling by the time you got home? I was totally exhausted. I wasn't feeling well. To tell you the truth, I don't know really. I was more upset than anything right then. How did you feel when you woke up the next day? I had a backache and neck ache. I told my husband about the car accident and he told me to go to the doctor. Have you been involved in any other car accidents since the one in March? I was involved in one. I'm not sure about the date. Okay, were you injured in that accident? No. Have you been involved in any accidents in the last couple of years? No. Since March, have you had any other types of injuries such as falling down or sports or work injuries, any type of other injuries? No. Had you ever fallen and injured your back, neck, shoulder, or any part of your body before March? No. Were you working at King Supers at the time of the accident? No. Were you working at the time of the accident? No. So, you haven't had to miss any work because of your injuries? No. Are there any activities now that you avoid doing that you used to do before the accident? Not at this time. I did before when I hurt so bad. It was bowling. How often did you go bowling before the accident? It was once a week. Were you on a league? Yes. Then at some point did you drop out of that league? Yes. When did you drop out? It was towards the end. Okay. And then we have your second test, 200. 
Ida Marie Grace, Grove Street, Mrs. Ridson, Denver, Perry, Betty, Tom, Sarah, Federal, 104th, 104th, Ima. And this is going to be then your second 200 test, and it starts at the very beginning for five minutes, you all. Would you state your full name for the record, please? Ida Marie Grace. Where do you presently reside? 91 Grove Street. Have you ever had your deposition taken before? No, ma'am. Have you had a chance to talk to your attorney about it before today? No. Or today? No. Okay. You were present during Mrs. Ridson's deposition and heard what I told her about depositions, correct? Yes. So I'll ask you the same thing. If you don't understand one of my questions, please tell me so I can rephrase it. Okay. Otherwise, I'll assume you understood it, okay? All right. Now, have you ever been a party to a lawsuit before? I never have. Okay. Are you presently a party to any other lawsuits other than this one? No. Mrs. Ridson mentioned that she has had a lawsuit against her car insurance carrier. Are you a party in that one also? Yes. Tell me what your education is. Eighth grade. Are you from the Denver area? Yes, I am. How long have you lived in the Denver area? I've lived here all my life. There aren't too many natives. No, sir. Are you presently married? Yes, I am. What is your husband's name? Harry, H-A-R-R-Y. How long have you been married? It will be 43 years in November. Do you have children? Yes, three. What are their names? Betty, Tom, and Sarah. Now, do you recall the accident back in March? Yes, I do. What have you been doing that day? I was at work. I had been working. And where were you working? At the video store. What did you do there? At the time, I was managing the store. What time did you get off work? I believe it was 5.30. And did Mrs. Ridson pick you up from work? Yes, she did. Where did you go from there? We were going to the Red Lobster to have dinner. Now, I understand you were heading north on Federal, correct? Yes. Did you notice the traffic light at 104th before you stopped at the intersection? You know, I really can't recall if I did or not. All right. Do you remember stopping at the intersection? Yes, we did. All right. Were you wearing a seatbelt at the time? No. Did you notice whether or not Mrs. Ridson had her turn signal on? Yes, she did. Describe for me what happened. We were at a complete stop on 104th and Federal when we were rear-ended from behind. We were waiting for the cars that were coming north to turn onto 104th because they had the turn signal. Was a right turn on red allowed at that intersection? I really don't know. Okay. Now, you said you were waiting for the cars proceeding on 104th. Were you waiting to turn right? Yes, we were. What was the traffic like on 104th? It was busy. How about on Federal? It was also busy. What were you doing while you were waiting for the cars on 104th to go by? Just having a conversation. Do you recall what you were talking about? I sure can't. Were you looking at Mrs. Ridson while you were talking to her? Yes. Was she looking at you? Yes. Did you have any idea that the accident was going to happen before you felt it? No. Did you hear any breaks or anything like that? No. Can you describe that, what it felt like when the accident happened? Just like a thud. Did you hear it? first or did you feel it first? I can't recall. It happened so suddenly. Did any part of your body come in contact with anything in the car? No, but I was pushed frontward. But you didn't hit anything? No, not to my recollection. Was the car moved by the impact? Yes. How far? I have no idea. Can you tell me approximately? I mean, were you shoved out into the intersection or just moved a little bit? We were moved, but I couldn't tell how far or how many inches or feet or whatever. I just know that we were hit. Were you punched into or pushed into the traffic coming on 104th? No. What happened after that? When we got hit? Yes. Mrs. Ritson got out of the car and spoke to Jean Quit or whatever her name is. And then her boyfriend got out and I got out and he said we should move the cars because we were impeding the traffic here. Did you talk to Jean Quit? No, I didn't. Did you talk to her passenger? No, I didn't. Okay. You said Mrs. Ridson got out of the car and then you got out of the car. Yes. And where were you standing at that point? I was standing on the right side when I got out of the passenger side. And then you saw Jean get out of the car. She got out of the car and Ima got out of the car. 
Then her boyfriend and I got out about the same time. Did you hear anything that was said by Jean? No. How about her passenger? The only thing I heard him say was, let's move the cars. And did you get back in the car for it to be moved? No. We went and called the police. Now, I'm talking about the cars stopped. You got out. Someone said, let's move the cars. Did you get back in so that the car could be moved? Yes, Ima drove it down. Okay, so you stayed out on the side of the street and Ima moved the car. Yes. All right, then you said you went to call the police. Yes. Did Ima go with you? Yes. After you called the police, what did you do? We. Okay, and we have your 180s, number one. And it says no proper names, okay? No proper names. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay, this is gonna be your 180 number one and it starts in the middle, no proper names for five minutes. What did you do then when you saw the puddle? I told the manager. What did he do? He went in there and got another pail and put the pail that was leaking on top of this other pail. Did you see him doing this? Yes. You were actually in the storeroom and saw it. I wasn't there the whole time, but I could glance into the storeroom for where I was working on the line to see how things were coming. Okay, you saw him. Did he clean up the mess at all on the floor? I don't remember seeing him do it. With reference to these five gallon detergent pails, were you relatively familiar with those? That is, had you seen them there by the dishwasher many times? Yes. In other words, if you saw one, you'd know what it was? Yes. Do you know the top from the bottom on them? Yes. How can you tell the difference? The top has a handle and the bottom is just flat. Now, when you saw the pail sitting on the floor with the puddle next to it, was the dishwashing detergent upside down or right side up? Or do you know? Can you remember? When I saw the puddle, the pail was right side up. It was right side up then? Right. Did you ever see it moved? Well, the first thing I ever had to do with the pail is when I went into the storeroom to get a quick inventory to see what was in the room, and the pail was upside down. That was the first thing I can even remember about that pail. It was sitting on the floor upside down? Yes. This was relatively soon after you came to work that day? Yes. Why is it that you went in to take inventory? I wanted to make sure everything was there for the day. In other words, you wanted to see what was there? Yes. To see what you had to work with that day. Is that right? Right. Did you have any other duty with it other than that? I might have been putting away some of the stuff that was there. On Tuesday the 29th, did you have to sign a receipt form or anything like that? No. Okay. You have no recollection of seeing anyone from the container company there that day? No. Did you see any delivery man from the container company there on Monday the 29th? No, I did not. Your first independent recollection on Monday the 29th of this pail was that you remembered going in the storeroom and seeing the pail on the floor upside down? Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. How do you know it was upside down? Because the wording was upside down. Fine. Do you have any independent knowledge of who put that particular pail on the floor upside down? No. I didn't see who did it. Do you know how long it had been there? No, I don't. Do you have any recollection of seeing it on the floor upside down at any time prior to the afternoon of the 29th? Before that, no. I can't remember if I ever saw it. Now, this is a hearsay question. Has anybody ever told you that they saw it upside down on the floor prior to December 29th? No. All right. You saw it upside down and you turned it right side up at that point. Is that right? No. I might have. You might have, but you don't know for sure? Right. And then later you saw a puddle. Right. Then you called the manager? Yes. Did he arrange to have the puddle cleaned up? Yes. What happened to the pail then? It was left right there in that room. In the same position? The manager put it inside of another pail so it would leak into this other pail. 
and he left it there. Was that a mayonnaise pail of some type? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Do you remember if this five gallon pail of dishwashing detergent was placed in a square mayonnaise pail or a round one, or do you know? No, I don't know. Did you ever go down into the storeroom later that night to see whether it was all cleaned up or not? Yes. When you went back there later that night before you went home, what did you see in the storeroom where the one pail was then in the mayonnaise pail? I just saw that that mess had been cleaned up on the floor. Was anything draining in the mayonnaise pail? I don't remember looking at the pail to see how it was coming along. So if I was to ask you a series of questions of how much material had drained from the detergent pail into the mayonnaise pail, you wouldn't be able to give me an answer. Is that right? Right. I've asked you all the mm -hmm. questions that I can think of in reviewing this file and helping the lawyers who are in charge of it that were significant to me. A lot of people have contacted you about this and a lot of questions have been asked and I'm sure you've given a lot of thought to it too. Is there anything about this whole incident? Okay, and then we have your second 180 Q&A. You have Lisa Mahoney and Mark. And this is um, in the middle. 180 number two for five minutes, you all. We are back on the record. For the record, please state your name. Lisa Mahoney. Do you understand that you are still under oath to tell the truth? Yes. Did Mark ever physically abuse you during your marriage? He certainly did. Can you tell us what the first alleged event of physical abuse was? There were a lot of abuses, not only physical, but mental. I didn't keep a log of every time I was being abused. The first time was when he threw me into a wall. When was that? Right after we were married. What happened? I remember hitting my head on the wall and almost passing out and having a big bump on my head for several days. Were there any witnesses to that event? If you mean did I go out and ask the neighbors to watch my husband abuse me? No. Who witnessed any marks on you? My mother. And when did she witness any marks? It was one of the times that I moved out. How many times did you move out? I left him three times. How often would Mark allegedly cause you physical abuse? About every two months approximately. Every six to eight weeks for physical abuse. Every week for mental abuse. How would he abuse you? Would he use his fists? Would he strike you with things? He has choked me. He has thrown me around. He has tried to drag me out the door. Anything else? He has called me every name in the book. Do you recall an event that occurred in 1991? Yes, sir, I do. Can you tell us about that incident? My husband and I had been skiing and we stopped for a drink in a bar. He accused me of trying to pick up somebody else. Anyway, a big fight started. We were driving down the highway and we were fighting and he started to go to the side of the road. And the only other thing I remember is that somebody was picking me up out of the snow and taking me to their apartment. What did he do? When we were going down the highway, he was slapping at me and stuff. And I was kicking at him, trying to keep him away from me. And he reached over and grabbed the door handle. And that was the last thing that I remember. Did he push you out of the car or did you jump out? He pushed me. Was Mark ever arrested? I don't think they could find him. They never found him? No. Any witnesses to that event? The sheriff's department. They witnessed it? They witnessed my allegations, yes. So how many times did you say Mark physically abused you over the course of your marriage? Every six to eight weeks. It depended on whether or not he had been taking his pain pills and drinking at the same time. Was there any so-called physical abuse that was witnessed by anybody else? Was he stupid enough to stand there and beat on me with somebody else in the same room? No, of course not. He is like two people. On one side, there is a very nice person, which he presents to most people. And on the other side, there is a very violent, quick-tempered person, which can be turned on and off like a light switch. And did you have any friends while you were married outside of your husband? I tried one time to go out with a friend of mine, and he came unglued. The question was, 
Did you have any friends when you were married? His friends, yes. How often would you have injuries? Every six to eight weeks. Every six to eight weeks you had a bruise or a bump? Yes. Every six to eight weeks, I got beat up. Beat up. And you know of no one outside of your mother who has ever seen signs of those abuses? No. Do you recall an incident in May of 1994? Yes. I was choked. Who choked you? My husband. To the point of not being able to hardly talk or eat for three days. And I had bruises along the sides of my neck from his hands. And? Did you call the police? Yes, sir. And what did the police do after you reported this allegation? They told me to leave the house for good. Did the police talk to Mark? Yes. Did the police arrest Mark at that time? No. He told them there had been a verbal argument. A verbal argument? And then you had told them that he had physically struck you? No. What I told them was that in the past he had physically abused me. And that this time, I did not wish to stick around to be abused again. I see. So what happened after the police left? While Mark was breaking the phone jack out of the wall, I left the house in a full run. You mentioned that he had strangled you at one point. Yes. Do you remember when that incident occurred? Somewhere around the same time. Did you show the bruises to anybody? No, but my mother wanted to know what had happened to my neck. So no one but your mother witnessed the strangle marks around your neck. Yes, that's right. Okay, you all. Those were really fair. Hopefully you all got one. Okay, very good tests. Have a great day, you all.